find this uh, webinar uh, of interest. Um, uh, I started th uh, Suntours 30 years ago. I, I think what uh, sets us apart from from others is is the fact that we have the experience. Over 30 years, we've we've learned a lot. We've dealt with all kinds of situations. I think the main thing is that I empower my staff to make decisions in the field, both the guides and also the people in the office. So when situations do come up, we have the ability to resolve and resolve quickly, you know, because I empower my employees. I think that's a, a big thing. The the other fact is that I am Costa Rican. So being here, you know, we're able to get out, explore the country, explore new trails and activities, you know, constantly innovating to come up with new ideas and new itineraries. You know, I think ultimately Costa Rica is a well-traveled destination and people are always looking to do something new. So I think the fact that we're here in country, you know, getting out to discover new hotels, new activities, uh, making sure that the providers are safe and reliable, you know, all help in the supply chain to make sure that the experience that we're going to deliver to the clients uh, is going to be exceptional. I think the, you know, the, 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 thing that makes us the most proud is the fact that when clients leave and they write and they say that they've had the best vacation ever, you know, I think that's the ultimate um, satisfaction in, in this business. Um, the fact that we've been in business and under the same ownership for so many years, um, you know, we can't do it all on our own. So we have suppliers that we work with and we've worked with for many years and the relationship that we develop with the suppliers allow us to give that extra little perk or something special to the clients so they feel they feel special i think that's the main thing um, the support staff the team of people that we have working both in office and out in the field um, the group of drivers and guides uh, have, are identified with the company and, and are the ones that are facing and dealing with the clients on a day-to-day -day basis. The people in the office are the ones that provide the support to the people in the office so that we can deliver, you know, those, you know, special experiences. Um, this is in our office in San Jose. Um, over the years, um, so every year we have an annual uh, guide training where we have everybody participate. It gives us an opportunity to get to know each other well. And, and I think that goes a long way in the, when it translates to the service that we're providing to our clients. Um, like many, you know, we belong to different associations. I think the Adventure Travel Trade Association over the last couple of years has it, it, been a great event for the networking and the conferences. Uh, this year, I'll be attending a, a special event here in Costa Rica, the remote. It's going to be held in Catalinas in Guanacaste. Um, hopefully, some of you will come down here and we get to meet in person if, if we haven't already met. Um, and then I think just like other Costa Rican tour operators, you know, doing our best to follow best practices uh, when we're operating. To this end, you know, we were one of the first tour companies in the country to get registered with the ICT, the Costa Rican government, in sustainable practices. And we're proud to have the five star rating, which is, or the five leaf rating, which is the highest rating, you know, provided to a, a tour company. Um, we don't push it, and I don't think it's, a, it, it's, it's the criteria that people are going to use to pick us, but the fact that we're safe, reliable, um, you know, can deliver the experiences that the clients are going to do it, but also in a sustainable way, it's kind of like the extra bonus, you know, so it's not something that we really push, but it's something that's there and we follow, you know, as many good practices as we can in the field. Um, over the years, we've received a number of awards that we're proud of, um, you know, going back to the year 2000, uh, we are awarded uh, Ecotourism Excellence Award, you know, so I think uh, what's important of that is the fact that it's not just something recent that we've done because it's the thing to do, but we've been doing it right from, from when we first started 30 years ago. Uh, the Ecotourism Excellence Award that we got from Conservation International was because some of the, some of the work that we were doing down in the southern Pacific coast of Costa Rica, down in Tisquita, working with schools and, and different groups in, provide, in helping local communities. Um, 
the 2016 award is kind of interesting. I think we were the only uh, one of two tour operators in Costa Rica. It basically reflects the fact that we're a reliable um, operator. We follow the Costa Rican law and are up to date. The Caja is the social insurance company of 300 plus tour operators in the country. Only two people, two companies receive this award. Um, and then again, we're really proud of our guides and the fact that you know they've received a top international awards both with REI Adventure and Natural Habitat. Um, not that these two particular companies stand out, but the fact is that with our annual guide training and, and the guides that we employ, um, the guides are able to deliver that experience to your clients. So I think that is is a is a big top factor. And again, the relationship that we have with our guides and have them identify and recognize the branding that's important to deliver the services. I'll leave you with this. Enjoy Alex's uh, presentation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, John. And uh, as as you mentioned, guides are are really number one for Sun Tours. Um, I think anybody that's worked with you can vouch for that. And so I'm really pleased to pass the presentation over to Alex Arias, one of Sun Tours guides for 25 years. He tells me, and um, boy, he knows the country inside and out. So through the, the next little bit here, he'll take you through an overview of regions and seasons, and then followed by an introduction to some of Costa Rica Sun Tours' new off the beaten path adventurous itineraries. They're pretty exciting. A lot of work has gone into them. And though of course Sun Tours can um, and does prepare many, many itineraries that include more typical routes uh, within the country. These are these are pretty fun to to have on offer. All of them, um, you know, working with with any anything from a solo traveler to a group. So with that, um, Alex, have at it. Um, hello, everybody. Good morning. And thank you for joining us. And thank you, Sonia. And thank you, Johnny, for your presentation. Uh, again, my name is Alex. Uh, and that really good looking guy in the picture. <laughs> so let me talk about Costa Rica and why do I like Costa Rica? Why do I like guiding here in Costa Rica? So first of all, people ask me, why do I have to travel to Costa Rica? I always say, why not? Why not travel to Costa Rica? You know, this is an amazing country. One third of the country is protected by national parks and natural reserves. Um, great biodiversity, great government support, good infrastructure, roads, weather, health system, communications, good experience at tour uh, service providers, um, upper middle income country with unique political and economical situations. Uh, the Pura Vida attitude of the Ticos. I think that's the best part of Costa Rica is the people. It's hard to explain what Pura Vida means. I always say people, you have to come to Costa Rica and experience the attitude of the Ticos and then you will be uh, part of the Pura Vida. You will learn what Pura Vida really means. Sustainable hospitality, protection and conservation values of, uh, have made Costa Rica international icon. This is one of the reasons. This is some of the reasons that I like Costa Rica. People, I mean, how's the weather in Costa Rica? I always tell people a funny story. We have two seasons in Costa Rica, rainy season and really rainy season. But in reality, we have two seasons. We have the what we call in tourism, the dry season, which is our summertime. And then we have our rainy season, which is what we call the green season. In the dry season, it's more fun, not much rain, more hours of sun, less rain in both the Pacific and the Caribbean coast. Great warm weather for those people that wanted to go away from the cold weather in the US and other places in the world. Many of the residents uh, birds are nesting. Also, most of the migrants are all over the country. So it's a good opportunity for birds. Most of the animals concentrate in some areas. You know, in the dry season, 
as I stated before, there's not much rain. So most of the animal will have to go to source of water just to have a drink. So that's the best opportunity to go and see them, experience the animals. Some of the lodges opens from December to August, except in uh, Peninsula de Osa, which is in the south. They close in the rainy season because it's really rainy and it's really harder to get to that area. What happens in the green season? I love the rainy season in Costa Rica. Why? Because everything is greener, less crowds, sea turtle nestings in Tortuguero, Ocional, and Camaronao. If you ever have the experience to come to Costa Rica and visit Ocional, the Arribadas, you can see thousands of turtles nesting on the same beach. There's a stretch of beach for, for uh, maybe less than half a mile, and you will see thousands of turtles nesting at the same time. Also, if you go to Tortuguero, you can see turtles nesting at night. You know, Tortuguero is one of the more important nesting grounds in the Western hemispheres for some of the turtles. Well, watching on the Caribbean and also on the Pacific side. Uh, July, August, September, and October will be the peak season to see whales. We're very lucky in Costa Rica because we have whales coming from South America, the migrates to Costa Rica, and we also have whales coming from North America, some guys to Costa Rica. The trade winds are less stronger, so they bring us amazing views um, of looking points. Fewer people traveling to Costa Rica, and that means there's less crowds. Better attention in some of the hotels because they're better customer service. So people also be asking, where do I have to go? So Costa Rica is so diverse, that you will have to go and visit different ecosystems, especially if you're into photography. You know, you can be in the morning in the cloud forest, and then in the afternoon, you can just get a picture of the sunset on the Pacific side. Uh, we're so lucky, with two coasts and mountain range that divide the country from Northwest to Southeast, with big mountain range and some volcanoes, we get views like this. This is one of my favorite pictures. This is Arenal Volcano in the north part of Costa Rica. And I would say a combination for tours, but volcanoes and beaches is the best combination that we can offer. Places of the beaten path. I always tell people on a different tour guide. When I'm with people, I tell them, you know, I want you to see Costa Rica as a traveler but I, I want to show you Costa Rica through my eyes. So I'm trying to take, and we at Costa Rica San Tours try to take people to very uh, unique places of the Bidden Path. This is an amazing bridge in the south part of Costa Rica. It's a little place called Los Campesinos. We kind of discovered this place about 15 years ago. So we'll be taking people there just to a unique experience. So it's really close to San Antonio, which sometimes gets really crowded. But when we go to this place, you drive an hour and you hike another hour and you just enjoy this unique place with the locals. A good combination, beach and uh, unique places here. What to do in Costa Rica? We are famous for adventure. Zip lining, surfing, rafting, canyoning, canoeing. You mentioned it. Costa Rica, we have everything. Okay, this is what I like more. As a photographer, nature and wildlife close observation. Just look at this picture. That's one of the unique moments that I will say you have to be at the right place at the right time to enjoy this. I was hiking with a group in Corcovado National Park, actually in San Pedrino. We're hiking along the beach and we see the tracks of a cat. So people ask me, what are these tracks? So I told people, I believe this is a puma. And they say, of course, no way, there's no, we're not gonna see a puma. So I tell them, okay, let's follow the track to see what we can find. So we follow the tracks along the beach into the forest. We get to a little creek, really muddy. We couldn't find any tracks there. So, okay, okay, what happened here? So we went back and right there, probably 
50 feet away from us is this beautiful puma sitting there looking at us and looking uh, uh, really peaceful. So we spent probably 15 minutes taking thousands of pictures of this beautiful cat, a puma. People call them mountain lions also. Some other photography opportunities for nature and wildlife close observation. Look at those toucans, monkeys, hummingbirds, hawks, that little green lizard on the right hand side of the, of the picture. That's a Jesus Christ lizard. Aputu, you really need to have a, a guy with you to spot this putu because they call it stick bird. It won't move. It will be really hard to see because it match the bark of the tree. Of course, a quetzal, an icon in Costa Rica. Most of the birds that travel to Costa Rica, they wanted to see a quetzal. And of course, we have some trips, especially designers to see a quetzal. Toucans, hummingbirds, macaws. Again, great opportunity in Costa Rica for photographers. As I always tell people, you know, when you travel to Costa Rica, we, we don't teach you how to take pictures. We give you the opportunity to get a picture that you wanted to take. Of course, we also help people trying to get the right settings on their camera, exposure and light and all that. But what I like to do is I like to give people the opportunity to get the picture that they want. Unexpected experiences. That's another thing that we are famous for. All the guys that work with us at Costa Rica Sun Tours, we are famous for this. Bringing wow moments, unexpected experiences. I was in Tortuguero about two or three weeks ago with this group of ladies, and then they wanted to share some of the culture. So we got this guy. This is my friend, Chloe, that guy in the picture. I've known this guy for a long time. So I was talking to him about five years ago, and he used to be a guy there. And he's still a guy there. But I was asking him and telling him, Chloe, you need to do something different. Your family is the first family that came to tour together. You have to present that. You have to tell people how proud you are of this land here and the conservation efforts that tour together have done and how the way of living changed from poaching and harvesting turtle eggs into conservation. So he creates a, what he calls a coconut tour. But I don't like that name, so I've been asking him to change that to uh, storytelling. So when we visited his property, he cooks for us. He tells us how to make coconut candy. So that's unexpected experiences. Another thing that we are really proud to do is we bring people to homes. You know, about 20 years ago, I took a group to a really fancy restaurant one day. Food was perfect, really nice. But the next day, I took them to a really little tiny soda in the middle of nowhere. And one of these people told me, Alex, the food from last night at that fancy restaurant was amazing, was really good. But I can get that food anywhere else in the world. The food from this little tiny place in the middle of nowhere is unique. This is what Costa Rica is. So we came to do with the idea to bring people to houses. So we talk to people in different areas in the country, and I would tell people, hey, would you like to make some extra money? Of course, they say yes. So we are proud to bring people to these families, especially this house in the picture. This is in Tucurrique, in Turrialba. We <laughs> I like that because we have been going to that house for 20 years already, and we've been there with three generations of people living in the house. First of all, grandma, then her daughter, and then his granddaughter is um, helping us cooking uh, meals for our guests there. So that's one of the unique experiences that we have. 
guest speakers. This is my friend Cloyd that I was telling you. We go there and he told us the whole history of his family coming into Tortuguero Festival to harvest the turtles, turtle eggs, and how little by little it was changed into ecotourism. Now everybody lives from ecotourism in Tortuguero. Tortuguero, again, is a little town on the Caribbean coast, maybe with 800 people living there all year round, plus maybe a thousand people every day as a tourist. So part of the culture he shared with us is uh, um, th this recipe, coconut candy. People love Floyd, people love his stories, people love the way he acts, people love the way he is. He's a real character. Real cultural experiences. You know, we often driving along with people and we see coffee pe pickers working at coffee plantation. Of course, we're gonna stop and we're gonna get into the cafetal, which is the coffee farm, and we ask people to collect coffee so they can learn. And then visiting, again, houses, we provide what we call real cultural experiences. This lady right there, she's making fresh cafe chorreado which is fresh press coffee, with my friend Don Martin and a couple more of uh, our guests that day. This is not my picture, this is a picture from my friend Leo. Another thing that I'm really proud of is to help the local communities. We support local businesses. You know, we can go Again, to a fancy restaurant, and that will be the same food in all the restaurants. But we always on a search. We always looking for little places like this. This is my friend Crystal. She and her husband came to that place about 20 years ago with the idea of creating butterflies as a business to export butterflies. So they have this beautiful butterfly garden. But in the meantime, they were creating a big garden to support his butterfly garden. And then 20 years later, they realized that they have a unique ecosystem in that area. So they own about probably 10 to 15 acres, a little forest in the middle of all cattle ranches. So this is an island for all the animals, for all the birds, for butterflies. So we go there often and they're happy to cook for us. And uh, again, that brings us a real local experience. So right there, she is actually making chocolate, cacao. Once again, you know, this is real people, real experiences. Again, we know we have over all these 30 years of service, we have been creating a big network of people that help us everywhere in the country. Right there in the upper, um, left. This is my friend Salvador. It's funny, I met this guy about 20 years ago. I was trying to steal some fruits from his farm. So I was with a group. So I jumped the fence just to grab, I think were like guavas or sour guavas, something like that. He came behind the tree with a huge machete and I talked to myself, oh my god, I saw that. But he was so nice and he invited us to come into his farm. And ever since then, we have been visiting his farm for, again, more than 20 years. What I like from that is not a tour. You know, we're trying to make the difference. As I told you, I want people to see the country through my eyes. So this is a very good example. I don't call him, I don't make an appointment. I just show up at his farm, whatever he's doing, he share whatever he's doing with our uh, guests. Those two ladies, again, those, that's the house with the three generations working for us, um, cooking and preparing lunch for us. Again, um, one of our guides, Marjorie, uh, on the left is my friend uh, Bisai. It's a guy who helped us uh, hiking with groups. This little lady, Maruja. She's amazing. Um, one thing that we do is we show up at her house and she will teach us how to prepare a meal, especially 
rice and beans with coconut milk. She lives in the Caribbean and she's happy to share her culture and her cuisine with us. Uh, my friend with the bottle. <laughs> this is Martin Salazar. Martin Salazar, he lives up in the cloud forest in Cerro de la Muerte. He makes his living making wine, blackberry wine. And also he produces uh, chitake mushrooms. The other guy, the, the, the guy on the right down, he's my friend Elias. Elias, he lives in, in Guanacaste. Um, he showed up how to make, um, to work with clay in the northwest part of Costa Rica. That's an uh, introduction of uh, what we do in Costa Rica. But you know, part of the innovation that we have, we always uh, looking for new things, new ways to make a difference, new way to make unique, new ways to show what we do best. So here are some of the trips that we are trying to promote lately that are unique, and I'm gonna explain you why in a minute. So let's start with this, Sirena Station in Corcovado National Park. This is Sirena Station, Corcovado Ten Camp, and Pacuara River. So the, the peninsula de Osa is one of the more biodiverse, intense places on the planet, according with National Geographic and uh, um, other institutions there. So this specific tree is unique, and I love that area. Just look at this picture, tapirs. That's the biggest animal, land animal in Costa Rica. And we get to see two. I was with a group and they wanted to see a tapir and boom, here they are, two tapirs. So why do I recommend this place uh, as a photographer? For well, first of all, it's again, wildlife close encounter of wildlife, like the tapirs, toucans, anteaters, monkeys, sloths, even a puma. So I'm gonna show you a picture later. Uh, you will say at the very remote uh, Sirena Ranger Station in the, in the heart of Corcovado National Park. The accommodations for this um, trip are really basic and very simple sometimes very, very simple. So you have to uh, be part of the whole ecosystem and environment. Look at these two pictures. Again, Puma, we saw this picture before. This other animal here, that's a Quarimundi. Actually, that's the biggest Quarimundi I ever seen. Another great experience that I have at the Sirena Ranger Station as part of this trip was, was something that was unique. So these are probably not the best pictures, but what you see in the picture, it's unique. I remember I was hiking with a group and we've been hiking already for maybe six or seven hours. We're crossing a river and we have to take our shoes. So we are the other side of the river, uh, barefoot, and then we hear this weird, crazy, scary screaming. I knew exactly what it was. But you know, we are the other side of the river, no shoes, and I tell everybody, what the heck, we have to see this. So we run across the river, and we saw this puma doing a kill. I don't know, maybe there's some pictures out there, but in my opinion, this is the only picture that I've ever seen of a puma doing a kill in Costa Rica. So right in front of us at the other side of the river. So without thinking, we crossed the river, we went around for maybe 20 meters, and then we saw this. All I noticed is everybody's barefoot in the middle of the forest there. So what else it's uh, with this uh, Sirena Ranger Station and Corcovado Ten Camp and Pacuata River? There's a couple more pictures of the Sirena Ranger Station. That's the beach at Sirena, and that's the Pacuara River, which is one of the more beautiful rivers in Costa Rica. Again, we stay in very, very 
simple accommodations at the Sirena uh, Ranger Station, and then we go to Corcovado Ten Camp, and at the end we go to the uh, Rio Tropicales Lodge. You know, I know, I know, I'm not putting any pictures of the accommodations, but I will be happy, and I'm pretty sure Sonia will send you an email with our website. All these um, packages are in our website with a description, uh, photos, and um, daily itinerary, and a picture of the accommodation that we use. So I'm pretty sure we will send along this information after the webinar. Sky to see. You can see, as the name is, we hike from the very top of the mountains all the way to the ocean. This is one of my favorite hikes in Costa Rica. I just finished this hike last week with a group from Norway. We have a great time. This is part of the, the trail. Right now, there's somebody trying to make um, a road that goes down to the river. I like this picture because in the picture, that's my friend Chino. He came along with me to do the hike with the clients and he had a really hard time. For, for this hike, I recommend you to be in shape because, you know, we're talking about 20 kilometers every day for three or four days. So you need, really need to be in shape. Another thing that I like from this sky to see is the places that we visit. We start at the Cerro de la Muerte, took about almost 11,000 feet above sea level, and we hike all the way to sea level. We stay in very rustic in um, places. We start at Paraíso Quetzal up in the mountains, and then we go to a little place called Dota. After that, we hike to La Chaqueta, which is a very, very remote lodge. It's a farmhouse owned by my friend Edwin, and it's like a punk house. We spend the night there. Thing with this hike is we don't have to bring any food. All the food is provided with these families that they live in the middle of nowhere. It's funny, we call somebody, somebody calls somebody, and finally somebody called them by radio because they're not a recession for cellular phone or anything. And then like, we let them know that we're gonna have 10 people tonight. So they just prepare meals for us and we stay overnight on those little places. Again, very basic accommodations. Finally, we end this tour with uh, Don Hernan in another place called Albergue del Rio. Again, another family that live up there and they make their living of, um, with a little cattle ranch and also with tourism. This is part of a rural community that they help um, us providing meals and lodging for our trips. Sky to sea. We start at the very uh, top of the mountains and we all go all the way to the ocean. In seven days. What else? What else do we have? Let's see. Oh, Tortuguero and Arenal. Oh, I love these two places. Tortuguero is in the Caribbean, as I told you before. It's considered Costa Rica little Amazon. The only way to get there is by boat or by airplane. You probably think, oh, everybody goes to Tortuguero and everybody goes to Arenal. That's correct, but in our case, we trying to go farther. We're trying to, again, bring um, better experiences for everybody. In this case, instead of, a, there are different lodges there, different options, and different hotels. But again, we're trying to bring uh, unique experiences. So with this trip, we stay right in town, in the little village of Tortuguero. So you can just walk in town, go and try some little restaurants, just be part of the community for a couple of days there. This is a good picture. This picture, I was lucky to be there at the right time again. So twice a year, they get one of those turtles that came to Nest and then set up with a satellite device so they can track where that turtle goes from Tortuguero and they can track that for two months. After two months, that fall off and then it's no problems for the 
from the turtle. So what do you do in Tortuguero? You know, you took um, both canals in the little Amazon, uh, fresh Caribbean food, And we can uh, set you up with my friend, uh, Cloyd, that I told you before about his um, storytelling tours. After Tortuguero, we go to Arenal. I like these two pictures. Again, things that happens to be at the right time. This lady on the picture on the left, she was asking me, Alex, are we gonna see a cat on this trip? I wanna see a jaguar. I told her, well, I would like to see one too. Guess what? We along the canal and there's a jaguar on the shore. And she's telling me, don't you tell me it was hard to see a jaguar? Ha, just imagine my surprise. Again, my friend Cloyd on the right picture is making some um, coconut candy and one of our guests just enjoying enjoying the, the, the coconut candy. I don't know, after Tortuguero, we move on to Arenal, which is one amazing volcano. Arenal, I tell people, is like the volcano you have in your mind. It's a perfect structure with smoke on top and not anymore, but used to be lava coming in one side. It's still active, but we haven't seen lava in 10 years. Okay, remember, I'm telling you about my perspective as a guy and a photographer. All these tours have great opportunities to get all these pictures. All these pictures have been taken in these tours that I've been telling you about. Okay, next, let's see. Pavones. Pavones is in the south, right? South from Peninsula de Osa, at the very end of Costa Rica. Great area for wildlife. Look at this picture. So where do we stay on this um, trip? We stay in a little place, little cabinas called Casa Marea Alta. What can you do there? Well, it's a good place for yoga retreats. You can learn how to surf. You can explore nature type pools a low um, tide. You can hide the rainforest right in Pavones, in the Pavones area. We have um, this Tisquita Jungle Lodge, which is a Tisquita Reserve, which is about 800 acres of um, rainforest and a tropical fruit, uh, fruit farm. Great place to see in wildlife. Some of the pictures that you can get there. Sometimes people are looking for big animals, but look at this picture of that um, crab. One of my favorite pictures. Little tiny, maybe half an inch. Again, great opportunities um, to get uh, amazing sunset pictures from from the south. After. The south, we go to Arenal, and we talk about what's in Arenal after it. One more picture. This is one of my favorite pictures. I got this picture last year in the south. What I like from this picture is that, you know, you see grandpa, dad, and maybe the little kid. I love this picture. Okay, another trip, Arana Volcano. These are modules that we operate now with driver and guide. This is our driver guide, uh, guide module. Again, this is our classic, Arana Volcano. It goes to Arana area and to La Fortuna, which is like the Now the epicenter of the adventures in Costa Rica. If you're gonna wanna do an adventure things, you have to go to La Fortuna. From zip lining, canyoning, rappelling, rafting, hiking, everything is there. 
this uh, trip, I don't know, we cannot three days and two nights. We stay the, at the, um, I don't know, observatory lodge for um, two nights. We go to coffee plantations. We go to La Paz Waterfall Gardens, which is an amazing place with waterfalls and hummingbirds. Once again, from my point of view as a photographer, this is amazing. Look at this picture of the monkey. Look at that toucan. As I told you, great views of, um, I don't know, lake, toucans, hanging bridges. On this uh, uh, also tour, we take you to an organic farm known as the Vida Campesina. We can have great opportunity to look at um, tropical creatures, sloths, toucans, monkeys, iguanas. I'm going to pass on to this um, other trip, Monte Verde. Three days, two nights. Monte Verde is a classic, uh, famous destination in Costa Rica. Everybody who travels to Costa Rica, they wanted to go to Monte Verde because of the cloud forest, because of the Quetzal. It's a paradise. It's a must destination for the birders in Costa Rica. Along with this, uh, you know, of course, uh, hanging bridges, zip linings, uh, birding, hiking, great opportunities for pictures like this. So again, you're probably gonna be asking, you know, I wanna see the destinations, uh, the places that we are, where I'm gonna send my clients, again, um, I'm pretty sure Sonia will be happy to send you all this information and a link to our webpage, which is crsantours.com. You can see um, all these uh, tours there and a description on these tours with pictures and um, description of the accommodations. Some more pictures of Monteverde. You know, just driving along the way, you never know what you're gonna see. Look at this picture of these people watching all those quadrimundos on the side of the roads. Hummingbirds, kingfishers. So that's my country, that's Costa Rica. That's what I'm really proud of. And as I told everybody, again, you know, I want you to see all these places, but I want I want you to enjoy these places through my eyes. I want to show you the real Costa Rica, I want to show you real people, I want to show you how we live, I want to show you our culture, our country, everything. So this is some more of um, the other picture I have um, this year. And I would love to spend some time with you if you have any photographers that wanted to take any of these trips, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be more than happy and they will be amazed with all the opportunities for um, getting all these pictures in Costa Rica. So I just wanna say thank you very much for joining us on this uh, uh, webinar. I've never been so scared in my life because this is my first time, so. It's weird to talk to the computer, but I really enjoy sharing all those pictures with all of you, my friends. So I'm gonna pass this to Sonia. Sonia, I don't know if anybody has any more questions or anything else that I can help uh, help you with. Thank you, Alex. You just made me laugh. <laughs> you did a great job. I know it was your first webinar and, and um, certainly had a lot of stories to share. I think, um, I think you did a really great job summing up what what Costa Rica Sun Tours really does the best, which is striking that really perfectly fine balance between activity, wildlife, people, and just being in the country. And I think earlier in your presentation, you were talking about Pura Vida, but 
I think, you know, it's, it just, it just happens on a trip with you guys. You just, you did a really, it was, it was very nice. Can't wait to get back down. <laughs> um, and there are some questions, so I'll share those with you uh, to jump in. Um, there were, there were questions about, um, any handouts and information that we'll be sharing. So of course I will be following up, uh, in the next day or so with a recording of the webinar as well as, um, various information. In the meantime, if you're, if you're curious to learn a little bit more about the itineraries or about sun tours in general, you can certainly visit, um, crsuntours.com to get a head start. Um, and, and we'll go from there, but I'll be sure that you're in touch with the right people at the company. And I'm, I am of course also here to assist in me with any queries. Um, so lots of comments in here, Alex, about the beauty of Costa Rica, the beauty of your photographs, um, the wildlife. Um, there was a question about where what beach it is where turtles lay their eggs and mountain cats come to eat them at night. Is that something you know, Alex? Can you repeat that for me, please? Uh, the name of the beach or maybe the area where turtles lay their eggs and mountain cats come down to eat them at night. Okay. Um, sure. We're talking about that. Um, there are two beaches in Costa Rica when you can see cats, especially jaguars, coming down to the beach to feed from the turtles. Well, first of all, it will be Tortuguero. There's, this season is early in the season, but there already been uh, seven turtles killed by jaguars. Wow. That's on the Caribbean coast. Yeah. Also, the other place that you can um, see that. It's on the Pacific side, in the northwest part of Costa Rica, in a little place called Nancite, which is in the Guanacaste um, National Park. Great. Sounds sad <laughs> and, and natural. Um, natural sure part of their life, you know? Exactly, I know. <laughs> um, there was also a question about uh, experiences and tours that do not require lots of walking. Um, certainly that is possible throughout the country, um, in, in, I mean, everywhere really, um, can, can get folks there. And a lot of the paths in, um, Costa Rica, I think, especially when you're heading to areas like Arenal or Monteverde, um, you can find some very, very neat and tidy paths. Um, Alex, do you have anything to add to that? Of course, of course, you know, it's easy. Normally it takes us half a day to realize or to get to know people, to see what they really want to. But again, you know, for photographers, you can almost shoot from the car. We have all kinds of different tours. And uh, again, our main thing is to do custom, custom private trips. So we can adjust all these trips Maybe not the one hiking the sky to see, but all the other trips, you can adjust it to minimize the hiking. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. we have knowledge and we know all these places and uh, you can be confident that we can really take good care of your clients in any kind of situations. Mm -hmm. It's been my experience in the past too, where um, you can do even some really nice backcountry road walking and then there's a vehicle nearby for additional support when you have the driver guide, or driver and a guide, I should say. Um, of course, yeah, sometimes go for a little hike and we always, always have a backup plan and always if we're hiking in a backcountry roads, the car is gonna be behind us, just yeah. in case. And I think that's I think that's really nice, especially for a group of mixed abilities. Um, uh, there are questions up about well lots of comments about your images and your excellent presentation Alex so well done um, and then questions about having images available for use on itineraries for marketing and yes Christine does have a have a link that I can include um, in my follow-up to you um, to be sure that you have access to those as well um, there's a question here about months 
which months are the dry season and is there a good shoulder season? Do you recommend any shoulder season over over the other, Alex? Well, um, two things. Um, I will be happy to share all these pictures and more that I have, so you can use all these pictures for um, on your websites and for any of these trips or whatever you need, just let me know. And um, dry season goes to December to May. Rainy season or green season going from May to November. And shoulder seasons, you know, I like Costa Rica all year round. It's mm -hmm. more depends on your this disponibility of your time. Uh, we can always arrange something. You know, I like the beginning of the rainy season where okay, everything started to change. Mm -hmm. I like the beginning of the dry season because everything is green still, not as dry like in the dry season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, the other question was, I know we can't, we can't recommend that people get a malaria medication or certain inoculations. I know there's nothing required to enter Costa Rica, um, but are there regions within Costa Rica where malaria is a concern? I don't want to say we don't have malaria in Costa Rica, but, but we have very few cases. Okay. And a lot of them are imported. So, and you know, places that we go, people must uh, feel safe. But of course, we always recommend to use box spray and take all the precautions. And uh, but night, people don't really have to worry about malaria and things like that in Costa Rica. Okay, great. And um, do the guides carry any special equipment with them um, when they are out with guests in terms of binoculars or any sort of equipment to help guests better see uh, the wildlife or the birds? Of course, we do. You know, all our guys they will carry binoculars spare binoculars for the people most of the times and we all use spotting scopes. Spotting scopes make our life more really easier to spot things. Mm. Spotting scopes, binoculars and most of the guys carry cameras and again we're trying to encourage people to bring their cameras and we're trying to help people to get the pictures that they want. Excellent, excellent. The last question here um is actually about uh, whether Sun Tours offers fam trips, um, and it's something that we've been chatting about a little bit with John. So stay posted on on that. Um, we'll see what we may be able to pull together. But of course, if you're researching a new itinerary, um, we'd be happy to work with you to put together a site inspection fam trip. And that sounds good. That's out of my alley. But I'm yeah. <laughs> pretty sure Johnny is is working with you about that fun trip that is going to be amazing. Hopefully, it happens. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Well, um, thanks so much, Alex, and thank you so much, everybody else, for joining. Um, we will, like I said, be following up in the next day or so. So uh, stay tuned for that. And if you have any immediate questions, don't hesitate to reach me by email um, or phone. And um, Look forward to being in touch and hopefully getting more of your guests down to Costa Rica. Thanks so much, Alex. Thank you, Sonia, and thanks everybody for joining us this morning on this presentation. And I hope I will see you down here in Costa Rica. Yay. <laughs> All right. Adios.